In this video, you will learn about Ruby on Rails parameters. Ruby on Rails parameters looks like this, and it's very important to know what it means and why we use it and how to use it. So that's exactly what you will learn by watching this video. I'm going to give you specific examples. So this is Jesus Castillo from Ruby Guides, rubyguides.com. Let's do this. It's learning time. Okay, so I have this simple um, race application right here. And um, we have a table with fruits, apple, banana, and we can do the standard actions like new, show, edit, destroy, right? So if you go to show for this apple um, fruit, you can see in the URL that it says fruits one, fruits one. What's this one? Well, this is where params comes in because to read this one from your application, something has to happen, right? You you have to have access to this number so you can say, okay, this is the banana, this is the apple, this is the orange, or whatever you have in your database, this user one, this user two, whatever, right? So how do we connect from this number, from this URL to your application? Well, if you go to your um, rail server output, you will notice that you have this line, parameters. So that's what params means. It means parameters. And specifically in this example, we can see parameters ID2. So this ID2 is this number. If I do ID10, there is no record with ID10, but we can see it here, parameters ID10. And notice this is a hash, right? Hash have keys and values. And that we matter because that's how you access the data, as you will see in a moment. So in here, you can see in this error page in Rails, gives you a lot of information. A lot of people just ignore this information, but it's very important, especially as a beginner, to start learning to parse this error page and understand it. One of the things it does is it gives you the parameters. So two, two ways to find your parameters. When you get an error, it's here, parameters ID 10. Another place to find the parameters is here in the Rails server output. And here it's also important to read the error. So it says very clearly couldn't find fruit with ID 10, right? So that's the basis of params. Now, how do you actually access these params? Well, I have a very standard controller here generated by a Rails scaffold. And we can see that this is the show action and the show action gets its data from set fruit. So before action, so that means it's going to happen before show. And that's down here, set fruit. And not a surprise, it's params ID. So remember it means parameters, but we shorten it to params. Here is why this being a hash, it's important because hashes have keys and values and we access the value with the key. And in Rails, it does something interesting that doesn't happen in Ruby, is that you can access the value like this or like this. It's called hash with indifferent access. So that's a Rails-only feature. But usually you will access this like this with a symbol, this is called a symbol. And uh, what's happening here is that we are asking for, for the ID value that comes from params. So remember, params comes from the URL. 
It, uh, it can also come from other places, like when I submit a form, as I can show you here, if I go to edit, let's see that we have a green banana, because we just pick it off the tree. Well, if I now submit this update fruit, we can come here, real server output, we can see that it has, it has been updated. That's the SQL, the database um, code that Rails produces for you. And this is the parameters. We can see right here, fruit, name banana, color green, quantity five, right? And the ID. And also notice that the name, color, and quantity, which we call attributes, are nested inside the fruit, right? So it's a nested hash. It's a hash with another hash inside it. So that, that's, I think. <laughs> um, so right here, we're finding, we're finding in the database, whatever um, ID this is. So we will be finding in this case, fruit with ID two. That's what this means. Find the fruit with whatever ID we're passing, in this case ID two, or whatever ID we're passing through the form or through the URL. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. And the other um, use for params is also we want to filter it. This called strong params or strong parameters. And this is a security feature which allows you to whitelist what attributes are allowed to be used and saved into the database. So that's what this is, strong parameters. So we can use Rails um, built-in debugger. So debugger allows you to stop the program at a specific point so you can see what's going on. Uh, this is called buyback. You have to say buyback. It's a Ruby gem that's included with Rails. And when I reload, when I go to show, when I click show, it will, it will stop inside the set fruit method. So I can see what params is. So you can see it's this action controller parameters object. So you can do params, params ID, and it's one. And we can exit here um, with continue. So that's the basics of parameters, params. Remember, it's a hash-like structure, as you can see here, and you can access it with symbols or strings to get the value, and it comes from the URL and from submitting a form, like an edit form or like a new form, any kind of form, we produce params, and you find it in your Rails server output here, and you access it from your controllers using params, then square brackets use like hash, and then whatever keys you want to access. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it, and so more people can find this video. If you want to learn more, watch more videos right here in the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And visit my website, rubyguides.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for your support. I will see you in the next video.